Hey everyone and welcome back. So we're gonna actually jump into creating our very first project and we're gonna keep it super simple. And like you saw in some of the other uh, smart anime examples that we were working on prior, you saw that we started working on things like different navigation items, we had different screen you know, transitions. We also had different things like interactions within those screens. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna start putting a lot of this different stuff together. And you have this project file too, you have the design, you have the actual prototype already linked up and ready to go. But I wanna kinda teach you a bit about how I came to create this design and also how I decided to start linking it up. And you can follow along with me to see exactly how I did that. And if you're feeling really ambitious yourself, I'd really like to see your interpretation of this type of like photo inspiration app that I've created here. You can do something totally different, applying some of the same techniques that I'm actually going to apply here. Just go ahead, jump in and don't be scared to kind of create something pretty cool. So let's jump right in. So what I have here, I'm kind of in the design page right now. Um, but what I have here is I have a couple of different types of elements. So if I look at my very first screen, I have a basic text element that I have here that just says explore. I'm creating this pretty cool photo inspiration app. I have a bunch of navigation items here. So what I've done is I have a bunch of different text items and then I have them all in a frame. And within that frame, I actually have this dot to kind of indicate this active state, similar to what we built in Smart Animate way before, where we had the navigation, we had that horizontal line that was moving between different items. And, and we're gonna do something very similar today as well. So if you can tell, I'm just gonna drag this so you can see, but I have all these different types of items. I'm gonna press Command Z or Control C for Windows users to kind of get back to where it was. And I have them all spaced nicely. So if I select all of these items, I can press Command A or Control A to select all the items. I can even hold down Shift and select this little navigation dot. You can see it in the layers panel here. I'm gonna kind of select that. So it unselects all of them. And now I just have the text selected. And you can see that they're all spaced 40 pixels apart. You can change this to be like 32 if you want it to be closer. I'm just gonna keep it at 40. Keep it consistent so that way when you do animate things like you won't have all these items moving as well. That'd be kind of funky looking. So I have them spaced at 40 and then I have the actual gallery below. And what I've done here is just simply created small and larger squares and I've placed images inside. If you notice in the fill, there is an image in there. And you may be asking, well, how do you do that? And I'm just gonna take one of these items and I'm gonna hold down the option key and I'm gonna drag it. Another thing you can do is you can click Command C or Control C and go off screen and it'll, it'll duplicate it but it's gonna be on this screen still, so you can just drag it right off. So I have that here, and I use a plugin. You can do whatever you really want, to be honest, but the easiest way I found was I have a plugin called Unsplash, and you can get that from the community plugin page, but what it's gonna do is gonna pop up that plugin, and I'm just gonna search something like portraits, and there is a lot of portraits here. There are a lot of them. And so what I'm just gonna do is I'm gonna select the actual rectangle and I'm gonna select the portrait and it's gonna automatically create a fill inside of there. So you can turn that off. You can change it at any time. It's a really easy way for you to go ahead and you know load images into your designs. So I'm just gonna delete that by just clicking and pressing backspace. So that's basically what I've done here. You can also just kind of select that fill over here for this image. I'm just gonna press Command C or Control C and I'm gonna select another rectangle here and just paste it right in there. And now I have multiple layers of fills. So that's another way you can do that. I'm just gonna 
undo all that. So that's basically how I came to start throwing all these images in here. And you can do that really easily. As you can tell, I have portraits, I have things around nature and even architecture. So totally up to you as to what you want to do. Now, the other part I want to talk about was the navigation. So this navigation, I'm just going to make a copy of it. I'm going to command C, command V it, and I'll just bring it off the frame. So as you can tell, this navigation is built within a frame. So I've named it navigation and I have this little active dot that's just called ellipse one for now. You may want to call it something better like active dot, totally up to you. And I have all these different icons and I did mention it before, but I will mention it again. Another plugin that is super helpful is material design icons. There are a couple different icon based plugins, but this is something that I use pretty religiously. Literally just I'll grab an icon, click it, and it's right there ready to use. So totally up to you as to how you want to pre-fill these icons, but let me just remove that frame that it comes in because they do come in their own frames like this. If you look at the icon, it'll say like home and inside there, you will have this kind of like little blank background vector. You can get rid of that or not. It's totally up to you. And you will actually have the vector. And this is where you can kind of, you know, dictate what the color is. In this case, the fill is set to black. You have other fills here. This one is 20% of black, so the opacity has been modified on this one to kind of show an inactive state. Because right now we're just going to stick to the home screen. We're not really looking to go back and forth. But that is kind of how I came up with this design here. And like I said before, you know, if you select all of these, you can just hold shift while uh, selecting. So I'm just going to click this one to start off and I'll hold shift now and I will click this this one and this one. And you can tell they are all spaced 56 pixels apart. You can make it 24 pixels, probably wouldn't do that. But you know, you can also do something like this where these are not spaced properly. If you select all these icons, you can go up here and distribute horizontal spacing. So it's going to keep that spacing perfectly across all icons depending on the start and the end point. So that's another way to evenly space your icons out in your navigation. So that's kind of how I came about creating that navigation. I'm going to actually delete that right now, but totally up to you as to how you want to do it. Something I forgot to mention is if you notice in the actual layers panel, you'll notice that there is fixed and scrolls and everything on this page is going to scroll except this navigation. And that's because I have the fixed positioning little icon box selected. So that means that when I look at this prototype, let's take a look because we'll be able to just kind of start it up right away. If I see this prototype, everything is going to scroll and what you can do is let's get into if we were just to create like a starting point, we're just going to call that flow one. We're going to find that flow. There we go. Okay, perfect. And we're going to actually unclick everything and use a device. So we'll just use the 11 pro because that's kind of the screen that I've been designing on. So we have the 11 pro. And as you can tell, it's a little bit longer than the typical screen. And that's because the content does extend beyond that point. So if you see it, the content will extend beyond and you can tell that the navigation is locked in. So another different type of thing for you to understand if you want to keep like a sticky bottom nav. So I have that set to fixed. If we get into the bottom screens, I mean, Another thing about the navigation as well, this is kind of like the secondary navigation. If you can see from screen to screen, like this is the nature version and I have all the items moving over until nature is aligned with that active dot. So if I command A or control A and press shift while clicking that dot, I'll just unselect it and you can kind of ensure that you have the right position for the next page. In this case, it's nature. And then I just kind of changed the images. 
Now, I do want to showcase an interaction from going from one page into another. And what I have here is this young man waiting for the train. That's essentially what I called it. And if I click this image, I want to go into this screen where I can, you know, see this gentleman and I could see some other information about him. I can also see like that navigation. Now it's no longer on a home screen or anything, but this is essentially kind of the interaction I'm trying to build here is going from showing different transitions with like a sub nav, but also going into another page that's connected to one of these images. And all I've done here is I have a rectangle like before with that fill of the gentleman. I have a new icon here. I have some text with some different styles. So this is more of like a paragraph style. I have a horizontal rule that is going to separate these two types of content. Another title for some similar photos. And that is all. So you can modify this file as you like. If you have any questions, please drop questions for me in Discord or for our community in Discord in relation to, you know, how do I build something like this? Because this is pretty easy, super self-explanatory, but if I didn't do a good job of explaining here, then, you know, we do have a community to really help out if you do need it. So that is kind of how I designed this whole little mini application.